Hi, so apparently there has been uh, increasing interest and more coverage of self-driving cars, especially over in the US. In the Netherlands, I haven't really seen them in the news, but I have seen a couple YouTube videos on the topic, particularly related to Elon Musk. So let's talk about them and as well as a very interesting alternative technology that might be more likely to succeed than self-driving cars. And by that I mean I have seen about three videos about them, uh, each proposing a different statement. One by CGP Grey which say that self-driving cars are a viable solution to traffic. Another by Adam Something which starts with the statement that self-driving cars simply don't exist. What you see now driving around are prototypes and test vehicles. Well, apparently in a couple of cities in the US you can already uh, book a drive with one of these cars and it will drive you automatically, there's no driver inside. And another video by Not Just Bikes stating that self-driving cars are here and they do work to an extent, but they are going to be destroying our cities when they are adopted, at least adopted en masse. But if self-driving cars are bad for cities given the course that we're on today, or even outright impossible with our current understanding of technology and artificial intelligence, what should we do instead? Well, create good public transit systems, uh, walkable cities, um, and other viable alternatives to driving that don't involve advanced computer technology? Well, no, we can involve computers and even artificial intelligence in some part of our cities, for example in the urban planning phases, as long as it doesn't directly influence the decisions of people or vehicles. Well, that last part may not be completely true. Uh, when we're talking, of course, about trains. In fact, they're pretty much the perfect candidate for autonomous driving technology. And from that, let's talk about the uh, timeline, the capacity and other implications of self-driving trains compared to self-driving cars. So, first of all is, of course, the timeline and feasibility of self-driving trains versus self-driving cars. Apparently self-driving cars have only been around since very recently, with tech companies moving very fast to bring innovations into the scene, which are intended to make driverless cars safer, yet they continually cause accidents, like a Tesla that suddenly stops at a highway causing a car pileup, or the uh, crash between a cyclist being classified as another type of object and an uber driverless vehicle. Apparently driverless cars aren't really feasible yet and still some companies are already offering robo taxi services. Why is that? Because they are testing these vehicles out and training them to make sure that they remain as safe as possible on city roads, which is so hard to do as exemplified by the many failures of uh, Tesla Autopilot and the so-called full self-driving. We, we hit that. We actually hit it. We hit it. Wow, we were so close on the quarter panel. Up. All right, YouTube, it is confirmed. I have hit that pylon. And these actually happened for a reason. It is simply very complex to build self-driving cars for places where people go. They would have to be aware of uh, pedestrians, cyclists, uh, traffic regulations. And road traffic pretty much has no central control system. In other words, the cars would either have to act completely independently or communicate to each other via very high speed of communication systems. How can you have a computer do all that pretty much simultaneously? Comparing that with trains which pretty much travel on a linear guideway only switching when a switch is in an actually diverting position. This already puts them under a kind of con central control but it gets even better. 
especially here in Europe, given that engineers have already figured out the complexity of safely managing huge volumes of trains and uh, especially ones that drive at different or very high speeds and need a long distance to break. Uh, the result are train protection systems of which we have a couple dozen here in Europe. But those European train control systems are now being consolidated into one ERTMS or European Rail Traffic Management System uh, which can easily be adapted into a system that allows uh, driverless trains given it's already based on radio communication rather than fixed beacons which were traditionally used. Basically a train could be made to maintain the uh, speed limit and to uh, stop in the event of an emergency brake signal being sent or with the addition of a couple of sensors the train could be made to stop automatically if it detects an obstacle far enough that it has to uh, stop immediately to avoid a collision and we already have sanctuated the railway environment so that only trains and railway workers who carry a uh, mobile radio, basically a beacon, uh, should be on the tracks, unlike what happened especially in city streets where you not only have the cars but hopefully also a lot of people walking and cycling which can interfere with the safety systems of self-driving cars. In fact, unlike the far more recent beta robot taxi services, we already have very operational autonomous train services for example, the Paris Metro 12 and Metro 1. And apparently there are even mainline rail tests with the intention to as quickly as possible roll out self-driving train systems uh, throughout Europe. Now, self-driving car companies are also saying that they will quote-unquote quickly come out with self-driving cars. But I can at best doubt uh, how quickly that will be and at worst doubt about their safety initially given the sheer number of incidents. Another big, big, big issue with uh, self-driving cars, especially when pit up against self-driving trains, is capacity. You see, a train can carry up to a thousand people, or even more, at once, whereas a self-driving car can at most do four, six, now, when self-driving cars will be rolled out, there will be autonomous buses promised to go along with them and replace the regular buses, and some of those will actually get built. But if there's money to be made, those buses will only be for those who are too poor to afford a robo-taxi subscription or a private robo-taxi like Tesla Model Y, um, instead of being an actually viable public transportation uh, network. So assuming everyone uses a subsidised or private robot taxi, if we have a city of 700,000 people, that would mean at worst 700,000 robo taxis on the road, and at best about 175 four-seater robo taxis. Assuming for every four people group sits together and travels to the same destination at the same time, uh, which is of course not the case. Um, instead, we have a bunch of individuals and small families who each get their own robo-taxi or robo-van which goes to their destination, separate from everyone else's, their own um, separate one which goes to their destination, and so on. Which is simply what happens with cars today and generates a lot of traffic jams, a lot of pollution, and costs a lot of energy, especially should robo-taxi companies decide to run these robo-taxis at higher speeds. Now, a lot of those cars and robo-taxis in the future would be confined to travelling across arterial roads, which are the perfect pattern to put railways at and to identify clusters where people want to go, where you could build stations except if those places are too spread out, which is pretty much what cars will incentivize. And that assumption of uh, every person seeking for others to travel with to the same destination is pretty much impossible. So we'll end up pretty close to worst case. Heck, 
perhaps even worse than that because people use robo taxis for more uh, trips to more destinations if they live farther away from the city due to the ease of the robo taxi. Um, I could already see, in fact, robo taxis being used as delivery robots. Uh, which would go to a pickup point with a given order and a delivery person or bot will put the order into the trunk of the taxi that runs the uh, item to the addressee. Meanwhile, a railway system would pretty much incentivize cities to be made um, to be walkable, to have train stations built close to the people or to have cities built close to railway stations. And that means that all your supplies, your shops, your uh, entertainment venues and stuff like that will also be close to the people um, and the railway station as well. Uh, so that if you're on your way to work or to university or whatever, you are, can just go past a supermarket or a uh, veggie store or convenience store or anything like that to pick up one item that you forgot to purchase during one of your last big grocery shopping chip if you even do those at all. This kind of talk pretty much leads immediately into other societal effects of robo taxis, given that cities and suburbs will have to adapt to them should they become mass adopted, which again is a very unlikely scenario given the current state of technology. But it will probably lead to a number of issues, including a lack of walkability, alienation, and absolutely massive energy usage to which cities need to be adapted. The first problem, the lack of walkability, is caused by how much space self-driving cars and cars in general take up on the road. Given that we're going pretty close to worst case scenario, we would need one car for every person until the road is pretty much jammed, at which point the municipality um, will, under the lobby of the car and uh, tech companies, have to increase the road size um, to basically allow more cars on the road, which due to induced demand, which was a principle discovered in the 1930s by the f***ing <laughs> way, uh, lead to even more cars on the road, another traffic jam, even more lanes need to be added, taking up space that could have been used for sidewalks, railroad tracks and um, bike paths, among other things, many, many other things in fact, um, and then you would get even more cars on the road, repeat and repeat and repeat until everyone basically have no other way of uh, travelling, or getting the increasing number of online shopping orders delivered. But what about people who have to go to work? Well, that means having to go into the city and just like what happened with the rise of cars themselves and the number of lanes need to be increased in cities, which makes them less livable and causes shops to go bankrupt, especially when you also add fences, which are very common along railway tracks uh, to streets, quote unquote, for safety reasons. Yeah, that also causes the second problem, alienation. When highways were being built out by guys like Robert Moses, they went right through cities and neighbourhoods which were therefore completely separated. Of course municipalities will promise overparted and underparted, but only a couple of those will get built out and they will never be maintained for cost cutting reasons. In addition, they will never be used because they will never be maintained and therefore end up very dirty, uh, very unreliable, very dangerous, very rare and might even cost money to use. And in fact, once the robo-taxi companies get all the land they want, they can charge whatever they want, which leads to uh, basically less social trips occurring as they become too expensive and all the money needs to be saved for commuting and groceries instead. And I've already talked about it before in a previous video, or you might have uh, spotted me doing it, or I might have done it with you. That is talking on the train. And even if you're not that type of person, here in Europe, the train has brought places closer together by being more efficient than any other transportation method that has existed 
at the longer end of uh, middle distance and of course longer distance. An additional little specific problem that I'm also going to be talking about is the energy usage of self-driving cars. Given that there will be a lot more of them on the road at the same time, each with our own uh, computer to read out the LiDAR sensor and make decision and that computer needs to have AI capability to be able to uh, manage so much data and all that put together uses up quite a lot of uh, energy especially as the car gets heavier due to the heavier computer systems and the larger batteries need to power it. Now of course propaganda from the AV industry is probably going to be talking about solar power charging stations for automatic vehicles and those might work and until we realize that more capacity for more cars equals more cars given in due demand. Even then, uh, self-driving cars will be a very great strain on our power grid. Now, trains will be too, and especially when they get self-driving, as we may need AI in central control to optimize timetables and watch out for uh, safety information. But that energy use will be much lower than that of self-driving cars and of course will go towards the transportation of so many more people and so much more freight indeed. So those three are just the main effects that self-driving cars will have on cities but will generally there are even more issues like safety. You know trains almost always have a conductor or a train manager ensuring that the train uh, journey remains safe the entire way. If there's any kind of violence on the train or your bag gets stolen or there's an unexpected technical breakdown, they can stop the train and call for emergency help or sometimes sort out the situation themselves. Robo taxis and autonomous uh, cars by definition don't have those. Even robo vans can't have a special place reserved for a manager. Uh, which means that you are very uh, likely going to be either alone or with people you just have to trust and you don't know. Uh, better still, you can easily get robbed or have your baggage stolen from you, especially given that robo taxis will have a trunk that can be opened up, presumably whenever the car stops or through some kind of app. Anyway, with those kind of things out of the way, I'll see you another time. Bye bye. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, please give a thumbs up and share this video with all your friends and perhaps consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you and I'll see you next time.